Team Fortress 2. A game that seemed cool, but its first counterpart game was not very memorable. And it was the kind of game that nobody really thought about playing once the orange box came out. It was all Half-Life 2 and Portal. They were the spotlights. They were the reason for buying the orange box. It wasn't until a few years after the release of the orange box that everyone saw Team Fortress 2's potential. And you see, Half-Life 2 and Portal are single player games. Games that are really good all of themselves, but you can't have an entire server of players rocket jumping at once, or calling up everybody in the server to dance together. You can't fight other players on a bridge connected by two trains that are on a roller coaster in the depths of the underworld. Half-Life 2 and Portal compared to Team Fortress 2 is impossible. These just cannot compare to each other. So back in 2012, once both Half-Life 2 and Portal started to calm down a bit, Team Fortress 2 saw its numbers rise, and that's where Team Fortress 2 begins to have its own spotlight, being a prime example of how to treat a game, how to build up the community, and unfortunately, how to abandon a game as well. So, now, let's see how all that boiled down, starting in 1998. Valve has just published their first ever game, Half-Life. It has groundbreaking graphics. Okay, well, it might not have had groundbreaking graphics, but for the time, it was very good, and the way the game was set was amazing. Before the release of Half-Life, video games didn't have stories. I mean, there were backstories, like for Mario and stuff, but there weren't any true story games, especially ones that were in 3D. And Half-Life revolutionized video games, essentially introducing campaigns into video games. And now you may ask, hey Donut, how the does this have anything to do with Team Fortress 2? Well, Half-Life became a success. That meant a big modding community, and Valve prioritized modding. One of the biggest mods that came out of the community was called Counter-Strike. Sound familiar? Another mod called Team Fortress also was released soon after. And does that name ring any bells? Ring any bells? Does that name ring any bells? Finally! The orange box is out. I want to play TF2 so badly, unlike 99% of everyone else. And... Oh, well, this is terrible. <laughs> Alright, cool. We got this new game mode called Payload with Payload Maps, Pyro Update, the Heavy Update. Things are starting to look up. Holy crap. We got a Scout Update, a Sniper and Spy Update, a Hat Update? I wonder if these are ever going to be important in the future. A Halloween Update, a Demo Man and Soldier Update. Alright, seriously, what is going on? Yeah, sure, Half-Life Alex is out now, but that's not really going to be available for a while. I'm starting to see these weird hacker bots everywhere, and is there any other reason that I should still even be playing this? Look, we already know that Team Fortress 2 recently hasn't been the greatest. The source code got leaked, bots were everywhere, and Valve hasn't really made any updates for around 4 years. But if you put that all aside, you can find out that the game is extremely fun. The game isn't one of the most played games for no reason. It's because of a few reasons, one of which is... This is the scout, this is the soldier, this is the pyro, this is the demo man, this is the heavy, this is the engineer, this is the medic, this is the sniper, and this is the spy. Sounds like a lot, right? Well, actually, it isn't. Team Fortress 2 only has 9 classes. 9 classes sounds like crap. I mean, Overwatch 2 at the point of recording is like 35 different heroes. Valorant has 20 agents. It might seem alarming that TF2 has so little, but it's on purpose. And it's because of the fact that Team Fortress 2 has different weapons. Bored of the same old splash damage soldier? Well, become a flying rocket jumping maniac with a one-shot shovel and have some of the fastest mobility in the game. Tired of a useless pipe explosive class? Well come on by and become a medieval knight that can go up to Mach 10 speeds. Every class has weapons that can completely change up play styles. TF2 players like to call these subclasses. And when you think about it, it shows us that Team Fortress 2 technically has more classes than all the other shooters that I mentioned. There are near infinite possibilities with what you can do with the different weapons in the game. 
game. The weapons introduce weaknesses and strengths that somehow balance themselves, I really don't know how. The characters are unique, and I can almost bet you that if you've played video games at all once in your lifetime, you've probably recognized at least one of the mercenaries. Team Fortress 2 flips everything you know about regular role team shooters on its head. Instead of having generic military soldier, ultra cool mega boss bounty hunter people running around, you got Team Fortress 2 nine base classes to start from, and a bunch of weapons to choose from. The design of the game allows for others to slowly move their way up into complex ways of choosing their class or how they play with the class, and you can play with all sorts of combinations and different classes that end up affecting the- Alright class, what makes good gameplay in a first person shooter? Oh, easy. Weapons? Well, you're getting there, but no, it's movement. Team Fortress 2 has a great advantage when it comes to FPS games, and that's the fact that movement was taken into account greatly whenever they were developing the game. If you have great movement in your game, it's a hundred times more fun to play. I really don't know what it is about movement and mobility in video games, but being able to like strafe and fly and jump correctly is just perfect. I also think that gameplay wouldn't be able to shine as great without good weapon design. Each weapon in the game has these stats that all have a specific role and playstyle, which can affect your movement, which part of the map you should be going to, and so on. Take Pyra's Flogistinator, or just Flog for short. It's one of the unlockable primary weapons you can get as Pyra. This weapon is extremely good. If you were to ignite somebody in flames, it would take 8 seconds for them to stop burning if they never got a health pack. Whenever you're damaging somebody with a medic behind them, their healing is decreased by 20%. And also, you can charge up an Inth meter that literally gives you only critical hits. It seems super broken, right? Well, the devs took that into account. This weapon cannot air blast, meaning it can't reflect rockets, or grenades, or stickies like all the other pyro primaries can. This upside and downside effect is implemented into every weapon in the game, and makes it so that you can still have your fun wacky weapons, but still make it to where they can actually be used constantly in-game. And whether or not you use a rocket jumper, or a direct hit, or a scatter gun, or a backscatter, it also depends on the Maps and game modes are really important and can be the staple of a lot of games. Like for example, Call of Duty Black Ops. Nuketown is an amazing map. Whenever you think of the game, you think of Nuketown. With Team Fortress 2, you can't think of any specific maps. What? Because all of them are so dang good. You like King of the Hill? Well, here's 15 maps devoted to King of the Hill. You got also control point maps. You got Capture the Flag, Payload, Arena, Payload Race, Special Delivery, Manpower, Pastime, Man vs. Machine, and then everything else. But either way, you get my point. There are a butt ton of game modes and a butt ton of maps. All of which are so fun. And don't get me started in the community maps. They're insane. Yo, Brian, you think you can start this one out? Mm hmm. Alright, listen carefully. Are you listening? Yep. Alright, so how has TF2 been so popular for so many years? Go. Alright, let's see. Come on, dude. Hurry it up. You're timed. Okay, okay, okay. What was the question again? What? Okay, it doesn't matter. How has TF2 been so popular for so many- Oh, oh, I know. 45. What? That wasn't even the- The community is probably one of the most important contributors to Team Fortress 2's popularity. You obviously got community maps, community weapon skins, community war paints, community cosmetics, and then all the posts, the art, and the videos, they all culminate into what me and a lot of other people would like to call a cult fan base. Now, don't get it confused with like a regular cult, this is just totally unrelated. A fan base so devoted to a particular topic as popularity continues to thrive for a long period of time. Fortnite would probably be a pretty good example of this. There have been so many videos and community made things that made it huge, and still huge to this day. That's what you'll see with every other popular game, including Team Fortress 2. The community is the life behind it. <laughs> Don't believe me? Look up Battlefield 2042. <laughs> A lot of people say Team Fortress 2 is there as well, but it's far from dead. I think the thing people get mistaken for is that the game itself hasn't received any major updates. Now, that whole development side of the game, yeah, it's dead. Yeah, they are ramping up their patches, 
but major updates are a distant thing for the game. The reason the game is actually alive though is because of the community. Its community is very strong and it makes Team Fortress 2 what it is. Since you guys made it so far to this part of the video, I might as well give you a taste of TF2's community. Or otherwise, a taste of Team Fortress 2 at its finest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are these people's names, bro? Alright. <laughs> now, honey, I'm curating my online experience. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yo, b you tell me a P made this nut? There's no really other way that you can show off what it's like to play Team Fortress 2. And since I realized how much I like the game, I felt like it deserved a video. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please, please give a like, comment, or subscribe. You can do whatever. And if you guys feel like any other games deserve an At Its Finest video, comment them down below. Otherwise, I have more At Its Finest videos in mind, nothing too special. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.